Welcome to the USU Career Studio podcast that helps you navigate your career path. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to tell your friends and family all about it. Subscribe to our podcast on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, or anywhere else you listen to get access to our newest content. Thanks for joining us for our Friday face-to-face episode. I'm Marissa Armistead, your host, and I am so excited to welcome alum and Northrop Grumman Director of Programs, Mitch Bott, to the show. Welcome, Mitch. Thank you. So, Mitch, we're so excited to be chatting about the College of Engineering this month, and I would really love to start our conversation today by you just introducing a little bit of your background. Talk to us about uh, your educational experience and how did that lead to your career in engineering? Yeah, I guess uh, like a lot of engineers kind of from from a young age, I, I love to just tinker with things and kind of see how they worked. I you know, one of those annoying kids that would take apart the remote for the TV and, you know, drive my parents nuts doing things like that just to see what was inside of it. So I, I was always kind of interested in how things worked and, and uh, how to use them, had a interest in cars around when I started driving um, and started working through, um, uh, you know, engines and just working on all sorts of uh, mechanical things is really fun. So um, I remember in high school, um, there was a, some folks from Utah state that came down and kind of introduced it as, you know, the, the space, uh, university in Utah. And that just really excited me. I always loved the space program and, um, you know, seeing big rockets on, on TV and that. So that, that's what really attracted me to Utah state and the program there. And I, I went right into mechanical engineering um, I think from an undergraduate perspective, looking back, it, it really set a, a great foundation of knowledge um, on what I would need to be successful in a career. Um, I, I enjoyed it. And I, I think probably one of the, the biggest things I learned through my undergraduate program was how to work. Um, it, it was a pretty intense uh, uh, four years getting through um, but, uh, I think by the senior year, you know, you're kind of getting the hang of things and, and got to work on a neat, uh, senior project, uh, actually building a rocket, um, wow. and, uh, working with a number of students doing that. We got to go launch it, uh, after graduation didn't work exactly as planned, but it did, it did go up. Uh, hey. it was fine. Uh, it didn't come down nice and softly like it was supposed to, but it, it was a great learning experience about actually going out and building something and seeing what that is like. Yeah. Very cool. Can I kind of interject for just a second? You know, I'm curious, a lot of students start in the engineering program with a lot of enthusiasm, really excited to make a difference in the world. And like you mentioned, it is tough. And so I'm curious, you know, what pieces of advice do you have for folks who are maybe, you know, a year or two into the program and just thinking, man, this is really tough. I, I would say kind of hang in there. That, that's kind of what I found is when you get to your senior year, you kind of finally reach a stride that all, all this math, calculus, and just background that you've been working on and working on you finally start to be able to put it into applications and see how it's really used in real world problems. And I, I think that's the, the frustrating part of that journey. Um, Cause I, I know myself and a lot of engineers you want to see, well, well, why is this important? How am I going to use it? And sometimes that knowledge comes later towards the, the end of your experience in school. And so it, it is, it is tough. There, there's a lot to learn, a lot of background and some abstract things you got to just kind of work through. Um, uh, for me, it is kind of, a, you just got to hang in there. Um, and you will eventually get it. You'll see that application will all start falling into place and making sense. Yeah, I love that. So I'm curious, taking that kind of a next step further. So you get your bachelor's degree and then what happened after that? You know, did you get a job, an internship? Did you continue school? What did it look like? Yeah, so I, I kind of set myself up with several paths after I um, got my bachelor's degree because I, I the timing was a bit uncertain. I wasn't exactly sure what jobs would be out there. And so I prepared that I could go back to school if I wanted, but I didn't necessarily have to. Um, I actually didn't find um, a, an actual job right out after graduating. And I, I got a little panicky and I ended up taking an internship um, 
after uh, I, I got my bachelor's degree, I luckily was able to be pul- paid as if I were a, a full-time engineer because I had a bachelor's degree, um, but it was only three months of employment. And um, working through with uh, Northrop Grumman, who, who I employed me at the time, um, they kind of told me, hey, if this works out well, there's a chance we'll be able to convert this over to f- full-time employment at the end of the summer. And uh, it kind of came down to a, a wire at the end of the summer. And I, I had a, was working and hopefully I, I wanted to stay. I was enjoying what I was doing. Um, but I had another offer out of state and things ended up uh, lining up there at the end of the summer that um, I guess they were impressed with me enough that they offered <laughs> me a full time employment. And I stayed on. And funny enough, at that time, I also kind of felt like I was missing school after being off. It just felt like the right thing to do. (laughs) And, you know, for some unknown reason, I I went back to get a master's degree in mechanical engineering from Utah State and kind of in parallel worked through uh, school, uh, my master's program, my first few years of full time employment. Wow. So that is a a whole conversation we could probably have, but just to get a a snippet, I'm curious, uh, you know, what was it like balancing the master's degree, a full-time job? I don't know, maybe you had a family at the time. Was there any other things that were kind of happening in in your life at that point? Yeah. um, I didn't have a family initially. I did get married partway through and definitely saw a dip in my GPA (laughs) um, as, as as, uh, I went and got married, but um, it, it was a balancing act and it is something you got to kind of go into knowing you're, you're going to eat up most all your free time, uh, doing this, but, um, I kind of, you, you go and work eight hours a day and you can have some free time in the evenings. And I, I just kind of felt motivated to utilize that free time to further grow, um, and it, it took a little bit longer than uh, it, it, it would have normally had I been a full-time student, but I did, you know, get through the program in about three years. And I, I found the master's program to be really great in um, kind of, again, l- teaching you how to apply all the things that you've learned. And now you're learning lots of applications, lots of advanced concepts and things I was able to kind of directly apply into the work that I was doing at the time. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. And it makes it so much more enjoyable when you can see, I think those application pieces, you know, like take something and say, I can use this in my job tomorrow. So I I can definitely see that benefit. So I'd love to transition our conversation a little bit and maybe have you talk a little bit about what it's like to be an engineer. And then also on the flip side, I'd love to hear more on the director, maybe management side of things. Talk to us a little bit about both of those, those roles. Yeah, I think uh, coming out of school, probably the biggest change that I saw is all the problems you work on are the reverse of the ones you work in school. Mm -hmm. So in school, you're often given, you know, here's some some design or something, uh, go analyze and figure out if it's good or not, is what a lot of the problems boil down to. Um, in industry, you kind of have the reverse, you know, you, you want a good thing, a good widget, uh, go figure out what it is. And so you end up with these multivariate, very complex problems that you have to go and solve um, that are often not straightforward and demand a, a lot of creativity and thought to be able to go execute. So the foundation you learn in school is very important in doing that. I, I, I've seen a lot of people kind of lose sight of that foundation over their careers and rely purely on creativity. And then uh, they, they design a lot of things that don't work. So you, you have to uh, kind of remain rooted and grounded in everything that you learn. But that, that was a, a big change for me that way. Um, and then seeing the whole business side of uh, being part of a, a business and enterprise uh, was also a big learning lesson. My, my first internship was with a, a company that um, had definitely been past its prime and, and was kind of on, on headed downhill. Um, but they were holding on very tight to their core competencies, which were all in uh, old and quickly becoming obsolete technology. Um, and it was interesting as just a, a junior at that time, kind of going in and seeing that I, I don't think this is going to work. But so it, it 
getting into some of the business side is also very interesting of strategizing and figuring out how to um, grow the business and transitioning from being an individual contributor to management is also quite an experience. It demands a lot more of uh, soft skills, understanding how to work with people. Uh, but at the same time, you have to hold on to your engineering know-how as you're asked to go check everybody's work, help them come up with how they're going to solve the really tough problems and um, work through those with, with a lot of your, your people. So um, even as you transition and further your career into getting into management, um, you have to maintain that uh, that root in all your engineering disciplines that you learned as an undergraduate. Absolutely. And I'd love to stay on this vein of skill sets a little bit longer. You know, I'm curious if you were talking to an engineering student, maybe they're a junior right now. Um, and they asked you, you know, Mitch, what, what technical skills do I really need to develop to maybe work at Northrop or, or any, any firm really, what, what skills come to mind? Um, for me, especially today, um, getting a good set of interdisciplinary skills is really critical. Um, I, I think that an undergraduate education is great, really prepares you. You can get into the workforce, but really to excel, trying to, um, broaden your horizons is, is very important. I've, I've worked most of my career in systems engineering and they often say a successful systems engineer is really a T-shaped individual. So you're going to be very broad be able to cover lots of different topics, but be very deep in at least one area. And uh, a lot of the people that um, I work with, we work on very complex, uh, highly interdependent systems, and often just having great skill sets in just structural engineering or thermal analysis. While we need people like that um, to be able to really uh, foster and grow into somebody that can own more and more of the system and, and be more of a chief engineer and a, a technical leader type, you need to start learning uh, some of those different disciplines, maybe not to the depth of an absolute uh, expert, but understanding enough of it to, so that you can own the whole problem and, and know how everything fits together. Yeah, and you bring up some really great points about having that breadth, but also the, but also having that depth within your your specific industry. That's so so helpful, and I don't think that is a concept widely used by a lot of students. In fact, I recently kind of came came to learn about the the T shaped model, and I I was really drawn to it because it gave you kind of a structure to design, you know, even like your education experience around developing both you know those systems, but also thinking a little bit broader about. Um, what do you just need to be aware of? So I love that you brought that up. I think that's really uh, a really great point. Um, I'm curious. So in your current work as a director, what are some of the pieces of your job that you just absolutely love doing? Um, I, I really, really enjoy um, a lot of the people management pieces. I, I find uh, we have great people um, that I'm able to work with and working through solving very hard problems with them is always great. I, I love seeing the ingenuity and all the creativity that people bring to the workplace. Um, that, that's a, a really fun aspect of the job. Um, and I, I really, I, I love our new hires straight out of college just for the energy that they bring. Um, it's really great to see a lot of the, the new college hires. We give them uh, what I like to call kind of sink or swim problems that, that there's something that's really hard. And, uh, you know, myself and management, we're off doing a million things every day, but coming in brand new, you're not distracted by, um, having everybody, uh, trying to get things out of you all the time. And we're often able to give people really hard problems and just kind of see where they take it. Um, that's often what we do with our internship programs and a lot of what we do with our new hires is just give, give people a problem, let them go off and solve it. Love that. Love that. So on the flip side of things, what is maybe something that is a little less energizing or maybe just a, a challenge that you've encountered um, in this, this line of work? Well, we have no shortage of challenges. Uh, one thing I think personally that, that uh, is probably something I don't enjoy as much, but it is a necessity from man a management perspective, is just uh, 
planning and planning and planning over and over again. How, how are you going to get from where you're at to where you need to be? Um, and I um, actually um, continued on in school after my master's program and got a PhD in, uh, in, in modeling and simulation. And a lot of what I studied through that was how, how to organize teams to efficiently execute engineering processes. And that uh, was something I, I have to admit I didn't enjoy so much, but getting into that and spending so much time researching the problem space there kind of brought, brought to me new ideas on how to go tackle that. And it's, it's been a challenging thing from a management perspective. I still have to say I don't enjoy it a ton, but it is um, an area where you really get thrown very hard problems. You have to use creativity um, and uh, solid knowledge of what you're trying to execute of what the engineering process is to get it done. Definitely. I love that. That's a great example. I'm curious, uh, as you think about your time, you've been with Northrop, remind me how many years, 15, 16? 16 years now. 15 years. So I'm curious, uh, what is something about working for this company that you didn't anticipate or expect, but you have been really shocked or surprised happily um, that it's a part of the, you know, whether it's the culture or the job, anything come to mind? I've really loved the culture and I, I've seen it change a lot over the 16 years that I've been there. The company I, or the location I hired into when, it, when I came on was um, largely what in industry we term as gray beards, you know, older experts. There were, there were just tons of people around to learn a lot from, which was great. Um, but kind of where we're at now, most of those people have retired um, and the, the culture has shifted with that, not, not necessarily a bad thing from what I think was um, probably an older, somewhat rougher culture that it used to be to where we're um, working now, where we, we're trying not to be quite as, uh, I guess, a direct uh, with, with some folks. But we, we do try to allow for that space, as people say, you know, fail fast, fail often. Um, and try and give, uh, especially our new engineers, some space to go out and learn and, and maybe they'll take the wrong path, uh, do something incorrect, but we'll make sure they do it in a small enough space and in such a manner that we can recover. Um, that's been an interesting cultural shift because definitely when I started, failure was never discussed. It was highly avoided in all situations. But I think in, in the effort to move fast and evolve and be agile in what we're doing, we are starting to allow some space for that. And that's been a really great change I've seen over the, the course of my career. That's great. And I, yeah, I love this idea of fail fast and then keep moving forward. Such a great, great point to bring up. Well, we're, we're running short on time, Mitch, but I do want to ask one final question. And that is, what is one piece of advice that you would give to a current USU student who is considering uh, going into engineering? I would say stick with it. Well, if you're really interested in engineering, um, it's a great career. I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed the, my time uh, in, in my career. I really enjoyed school, this is obvious, because I, I just kept going and going and going. Um, but you, it's something you really just have to stick with it. I, I saw a lot of people um, in my classes, you know, sophomore and, and junior year got to be real slogs and they, they were hard to get through. Um, but I, I saw the light at the end of the tunnel during my senior year. That's fine. When everything started clicking and making sense. Um, and at that point it, it seemed, uh, I was kind of able to buckle in and understand what was going on. And I think just having that stick to and working through it is the best advice I, I can pass on that if you're frustrated, there's great resources the university has to help you um, learn the concepts, get through them, but understand there will be a light at the end of the tunnel and all this, uh, what, what could seem like menial work that you're just working through is, is really preparing you to apply all those concepts to real world problems. What a great way to end our conversation, uh, reaching out, getting resources, and there is light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> well, thanks so much, Mitch. I so appreciate your time and your advice that you're sharing. I think students are really going to benefit from what we have been able to discuss today. Thank you so much, Marissa. It's been my pleasure. We hope you loved this episode of the USU Career Studio podcast. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and share this episode with your friends and family. 